Welcome to Black and Well in the LBC, sponsored by the Black Health Equity Fund. I'm glad to say that I'm all three of those things, and I hope that you are well, wherever you may be. My name is Percy Daggs III. Our third and final segment of Black and Well in the LBC focuses on the medical science and our youth. Dr. Swain Cofield, a Long Beach resident, a family practitioner at Kaiser Permanente, and pastor of Rose of Sharon AME Church, joined us in the barbershop for a discussion. Now this part I was very excited about because I've had a lot of reservations about vaccinations and COVID-19's long-term effects and immediate effects. And I got a few of my questions answered. I'm glad Dr. Swain Cofield, somebody who looks like me, shares the same struggles and concerns as me as well, just like everybody else who has a family in our community, was willing to open up and share his uh, expert advice. Here he is. Really, well, the first thing that's on my heart about education, if after a, a year, a year and a month, people must, must remember if we're going to talk about COVID-19, is that there are not 19 COVID viruses. There are about six <laughs> different viruses yeah. and one mutation. Yeah. COVID-19 yeah. stands for coronavirus disease, and the 19 came from what year it was discovered. So I don't know any black person that has ever said they're 19, but I have heard other folks mm -hmm. say that. I just want to make sure that people oh, that look oh like God. me don't say, what about COVID-20 or COVID-21? Oh. Because there is no such such thing. No, you be hearing that in the barbershop all the time. All they be the like, time. Oh, not anymore. It's going to be a, not a, anymore. a COVID-20. Everybody got an expert. Not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. Is that so then a year after that, it's going to be another potentially one. Potentially, right? could it be with, with the mutation of the virus, different strains? Could there eventually be no, 19 would be, different strains? It would strains? be the eighth coronavirus. It would be okay. the eighth coronavirus. Yeah, but Just then, various strains. It would be called so, a different name. But, okay. But, I'm sorry, sir, but a question for you. Like, you know. I know you don't have the answer, but do you do you think that if okay, like how in New Zealand and Australia they just shut everything down, nobody in, nobody out for a period of time, and they live in life like normal. And I remember when we first started, they shut everything down, everything. No, you know, you were an essential worker, blah 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 blah. And then it seemed like, and then that's when I call the poly tricks came involved. Huh. Yeah, and. The other thing that all mighty devil, I call the devil dollar. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, hold on a second. And I'm not a politician, but if that dude would have said, check this out. We're going to shut this down for four months. I got things in place where businesses, if you're a central worker, you keep doing your thing. If you're a small business owner, we're going to, you're going to stop. You owe no bills, but we're going we're gonna to subsidize you, blah, 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 blah. And maybe we, we could have, my wife maybe could still be alive. Maybe. That's right. But here's the thing, but in America, we right. live, we're divided and we're asking adults to do something that they probably didn't obey when they were children. Right. Mm -hmm. you have that nobody's gonna tell me what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. so, and not to mention, if we would have had a leader, here's my, again, I, 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 you know, I'm not a political person, me, yeah, but I, you. I firmly believe that if sometime in, in May, June, July, or, or, or early on, yeah, they, if, yeah. if Donald Trump leans on a, uh, on a on a podium and says, look, y'all, uh, I was wrong. Right, like, exactly. Th this is exactly. serious. You know, he would have got reelected. He sure would have. He's a dumb ass. Oh, <laughs> he, excuse he, me. He, no, he, he would have he would have got reelected. Right. And, and, and so what, what we what we mold this into is we watch everything shut down. And uh, I, I really feel for people who had to graduate high school online. I yeah. watched Polly's graduation online. I knew exactly my daughter knew which friends at what time they're at, in the video they were going to be on. And we, we go th all through, uh, and I basically went from Friday seeing a full schedule of patients to talking on the phone and doing video visits with people. Mm. And the only people that, that actually came into the exam room were people that I triaged over the phone and said, uh, you know, I had to go through all those questions. You know, you've heard mm -hmm. the questions. Mm -hmm. Fever, mm -hmm. anybody around mm -hmm. COVID-19. Mm -hmm. This is before everyone who wanted to test get a test which was false at the time and much more true now and so i would see maybe one or two people per day and i would have maybe 20 touches per day so that, that leads me oh. to a question because clearly we all can agree that this was severely mishandled um, but my question is speaking on the medicine aspect of it is from the people that you're seeing and treating and people not necessarily having access being able to get to you or to get inside the hospital those that are being diagnosed are being told to go home Go home, take care of yourself like this sort of for two weeks and the recovery rates, I'm sure you know the analytics and the numbers better than me are, are 
pretty high for most, right? What well, the, the number the numbers are changing, so and I think the numbers vary by county and by state. So, but those uh, without pre-existing conditions. But, but the numbers are astounding when it comes to people that are of a certain age right. that have yeah. uncontrolled diabetes, that have, you know, more than one or two comorbid conditions. That fact is true across the board. Right. It, well, my, and my question that I was leading up to was, what is the best way outside of, we're talking about, because of what Ak said, we're talking about vaccinations and the numbers decreasing because of vaccinations and, and everything like that. But if it was not mishandled and you got countries around the globe who got on top of it early, are some countries not necessarily forced to have to rely on vaccinations to survive this thing now because they used, what are the things Good that question. we could use, vitamin D, zinc, things like that? The people that jumped on it early who aren't relying on emergency vaccines, what did they do and what could people do uh, to build their immune system and help themselves in the case that they did contract the, the, the virus? First things first, this is a once in a century pandemic. Right. And so the way we're gonna get out of, it, out of this is that we pursue this as if our life depended on it. Mm -hmm. And so that means that people need to get vaccinated. Okay. And so if those people in New Zealand and Australia, like you were talking about, they want to come visit America. I don't know why, but you know, because you know, we're so <laughs> divided, but you know what I'm saying. But they want to come visit America. We're going to have something where you're going to need to be vaccinated. You're going to need to be tested. And vice versa, if you want to go visit them or you want to go to Jamaica or you want to go somewhere else, because this has, if there's a map on the uh, World Health Organization and on the CDC that says that, remember, there was a point where these countries were affected, then there yeah. were a little bit more, yeah. and now every country became affected, and that's why we see that graph that started at one on, on, on leap day, February 29th, the first, per, first day that someone died in the United States. Now it's over 510,000 people, right. 510,000 right. 510, mm. deaths. But, but when, it, when it comes to the vaccination, there, there are so many uh, aspects. Now you think about this. We heard about this Operation Warp Speed, right? Yeah. Let's, let, let's clear this up right now. The vaccination plan did not begin when the pandemic started. Right. Coronavirus has been around since 1973, and they've been working on a vaccination for coronavirus since the first, before the first pandemic, which was in 2002, and killed about 750 people you know, you can check the stats later, but, but they were working on it. And there were, I mean, there were brown skin and white skin and yellow skin people from all walks of life working on this vaccine all the way up until 2004. So people, you know, I, I think it was a, I think it was misleading to call it warp speed because like we're going to start from scratch, but that vaccine had been worked on for almost 20 years, if not more. And you think about that because that's where uh, us folks, and uh, our fathers and our, our, our grandfathers and mothers and our, you know, and our greats, you know, they went through, you know, you know segregation mm -hmm. and, and, and everybody knows about the Tuskegee experiment, right. but, exactly. but you have to know the full story. Now, now, now let's put it in context because we just came out of Black History Month and I focused on this with my congregation. We know about the Red Tail Squadron, mm -hmm. 1941, mm -hmm. 48, World War II. They got medals, they got handshakes from white men went back to a segregated society mm -hmm. right. in, in, in Alabama. During that time, they were offering free health care mm -hmm. to black folks. Supposedly. You know, so, no, 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 they offered free health. They got free health. They got free <laughs> health care access from 1932. Okay. And then at some point, a uh, couple hundred people got diagnosed with syphilis. And they put them in a placebo group. They actually chose not to treat them. Chose not to treat them. And this is how they discovered that penicillin was a treatment for, for, uh, for syphilis. And so, the one thing that people miss out, did you know that this study ended in 1972? Mm. This was not a, a five year, it was supposed to be a six year, I'm sorry, six month plan that, that spanned 40 years. In fact, there were people that, that, that won a settlement and the last yeah, widow about, yeah. that just got paid died in 2011. They've yeah. been getting paid. Now, what came from this, is, and my point, what came from this was a thing called the Belmont study. The Belmont study came where vaccines must be uh, must be uh, regulated. You know, we you know we were in a country we were in, we lived in a country for four years where people were trying to deregulate a bunch of stuff. But vaccines and vaccine developments and and, and clinical trials had to become ethical. The key word there were three there were three elements, but ethics became you know you know otherwise brown folks of, of any variety were not going to volunteer. And no. in fact, I'm going to be honest with you. I prayed over, I fasted and prayed over, and I was really thinking, if someone approached me, I had colleagues, Indian people, um, 
and, uh, and other African Americans who worked in, uh, in the Midwest and in, 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 on the East Coast mm -hmm. who had a chance to be doctors that were part of a clinical trial. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of them had actually were in the proportion of people that actually got the vaccine. I told my wife, I said, if someone approached me to be part of the clinical trial, the Lord told me that I should be a part of it. It didn't really, it didn't really come across my way. Uh, so for the record, just so, so we can clear this out, I got my first vaccine on New Year's Eve. Okay. Uh, uh, I, you know, I was on vacation. I, I usually have this thing about getting most of my shots on a, on a time when I'm off of work mm -hmm. on a Friday. Mm -hmm. I've never had a major reaction. In fact, I've had some of my best workouts the day after I got a vaccine. Mm -hmm. Got my second vaccine. I got the Moderna. I got the second vaccine on January 28th, both times about 30, 30, 35 hours of arm soreness mm -hmm. and lifting weights and doing what I normally do and seeing patients uh, like I normally do. And uh, uh, my, my mother-in-law just got her second vaccination today. Uh, I get text updates from my wife because, you know, that's what we do, you know, you know and so um, everyone's been concerned. But I've been really enthusiastic about people of any age that are black, you know, post it on social media, you know, be influential because there is a, there is a, a, a graph. I, I have a, a lot of close friends. I have a best friend from med school. He is uh, Dr. Davis. He's part of the... Uh, public health department. He's second in line right down the hall from Dr. Fur, the person you see on the press conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, he has a colleague, Dr. Arlene Brown, black woman at UCLA, David, David Geffen School of Medicine. And she shows this graph of every, every million people that get uh, COVID-19, there are 15,000 um, hospitalizations and so many deaths. And there are, for every million people that get the vaccine, there are about one to two serious illnesses. There seems to be a lot of information about the short-term effects that people are, are getting from six months to a year, the things that we'll know right away. What, what could you say to the people to soothe their concerns about the long-term effects? There's been... Are you talking about the long-term effects of getting the virus getting or the, the vaccine? vaccine? Get, 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 the, 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 the possible long-term effects because, of getting okay, the vaccine. Th there's someone I know of who got the virus and they, they, they recovered from it, but from the recovery now, they have to take some type of some medicine because it messed their heart up a little bit or something. And prior to this, they were fine. So, so what I tell everybody, I because mean, uh, people have been getting diagnosed in America. Remember, we had a whole people, group of people between perhaps the middle of February, perhaps even January, who think back, man, I had this flu-like illness. I, I had a January, COVID, last right? year, I did. Right, okay. And uh, so, yeah. so we have people in, 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 that, in that category and we have a whole bunch of people that never were able to get tested because they didn't fit the criteria before we didn't have enough, uh, have enough tests to test. I never could test. So what I've been telling everybody, including today, in my phone calls, is anyone who's been diagnosed with COVID, especially if you have a cell phone with like a notes, mm -hmm. just document your symptoms and just keep adding every single mm -hmm. day. I'm talking for the next year or two because the jury is still out. I, I didn't even tell you guys that in, in early July, my father got COVID he uh, was the third person in the household, my niece, then my stepmother. And then two, no, three weeks, 21 days after getting COVID, after finishing his isolation, he started to slur his voice and, and because he didn't adequately get hydrated. So this is what we're talking about. Oh. And so he said he was fine and he's talking to me about, I said, why do you sound like that? Oh, it's because I'm laying down in the bed. And, I, and again, he's in Kansas City, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, about five hours later, I'm on vacation. I was leaving a golf course. And my stepmother's like, I'm taking him to the hospital. And so, but here, let me finish. No, he, go ahead. He was, no. Uh, the whole issue is he went into kidney failure. His mm -hmm. blood pressure dropped. He was in the ICU wide awake with two uh, medications. And his COVID test was negative. He had already been tested. He had already cleared the COVID from his body. But he had had, and he had some COPD issues. He survived. And again, imagine mm -hmm. me talking to, 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 to my pop. You know, wondering if, you know, this is the last time he's going right. to text me or the last time I'm going to speak to him. Because we yeah. talk every morning, yeah. uh, I'm, every morning, whether I'm getting to the garage or I'm driving to work or I'm in, in yeah. my office. Yeah. And so I've been asking everyone, as much, I mean, if you went on a workout and you're used to running five miles and you're only able to get two miles, you need to document that because we're talking about lung disease, yeah. and heart disease, and kidney disease. People are talking about, you ever heard anyone talk about brain fog? Mm -hmm. My memory's not just the same. And, and there's going to be people publishing articles probably five, ten years from now about the post effects of COVID. So I can't really answer that question fully mm -hmm. because 
we're still we know, we're still yeah. documenting. I mean, there are people, you know, there are still people getting diagnosed today that are gonna. There are people who did not have a loss of taste or smell at the time they were diagnosed that 60 days later now have that issue. Should, and those are the post effects of COVID. Should the people have any concern about the post effects of the vaccinations? There's been talks of possible sterility. mRNA, is there a way you can explain messenger RNA to people that don't have an idea? People are concerned about tracking things that people call conspiracy theories and that, things like that, but there's information that people are, are making people apprehensive. Uh, Let's talk about it. the fertility thing first. I just, the last email that I responded to before I got in my car to come down and talk to the fellas was uh, a female, 24 years old, worried about, w woman, worried about, uh, worried about being fertile. There have been no documented effects now uh, of, of any type of fertility in men or women. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to, to messenger RNA, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to defer all that stuff to the people in the public health and, okay. and all the infectious disease because, I mean, there, we, we'll talk about replication and mutation and, you know, but what I, what I can tell you is when you get, uh, when you get the vaccine, your, body, your body's natural immune system begins to create immunity. Now, what they've discovered, and again, I don't know enough about the Johnson & Johnson one, which has just now got emergency approval that the reason there's a booster that's necessary is that you need to have a heightened response. Now, you were, you were bringing up something about, you know, what are we gonna know about this time next year? The one thing that is missing right now, fellas, is if you've ever had a test for like hepatitis, measles, mumps, rubella, chicken pox, they actually have a titer with a number. Now, we're just checking people if they have positivity for the, um, for the virus, for the antibodies, or negativity. We don't have positive and it's this much. Mm -hmm. And at some point that's gonna happen and that's gonna, that and mutations are gonna be the thing that determine when our next COVID shot's gonna be. So it'll be something that we grow, we, we end up learning to live with. And, oh, we're gonna, have to, we're, we're, we're gonna have to live with I mean, we lived with polio, but polio mm -hmm. didn't replicate. Right. So we didn't have to go back and get another shot. We eradicated it. So the bottom line is don't get complacent. Don't get complacent. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. There he is. Yes, That's one person hey, I know yeah. ain't complacent on the court. What's going on, man? What's up, bro? How you doing, How you doing brother? Here, good, you gonna good. cut? Yes, sir. Oh, here, yes, sir. Yeah, take, you, have, you have my spot, bro. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. I ain't paying for it, though. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. right. <laughs> John. Darren, everybody, this is Darren Henry. Sorry. Darren Henry is a junior, Long Beach Poly Jackrabbit. Plays with this gentleman right here on the Long Beach Poly Varsity basketball team. How you doing, man? I'm good, are you? Good, man. Good, Thanks good. for joining us today in the shop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You cleaned up, huh? Yeah, finally, man. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? So, listen, man, I'm glad you joined us because we were just talking about complacency. Um, and that made me think of the fact that I'm, I'm a homeschool parent. Mm -hmm. So, before all of this happened, I was already homeschooling my son. Mm -hmm. He's in the third grade okay. for the last three years. So, it didn't really change much in my household mm -hmm. except for the fact that I can't get my hair cut and I don't get no sleep okay. because yeah, I don't get right, any right. breaks and I can't, you know, right, binge yeah, watch yeah. anything. I got right. kid time, yeah. right? I'm telling you my life story. Just <laughs> ignore me while I get this off my chest. So, now that I got that off my chest, how has it been for you, man? Because you had to spend, what, the end of your sophomore, sophomore year? Sophomore year to, to, to the beginning of my junior year. Uh, it's been rough. It's been rough just trying to adjust from being in class, in, in, in front of the teacher, speaking, asking questions, to going all online. And, and, and it's really been hard. And, and having siblings and stuff in the household trying to focus. So you're hearing one room loud and, and everyone's getting their stuff done. So it's really been tough trying to adjust. And uh, I'm still adjusting to this day. So. Mm. Uh, and, but at the end of the day, you know, just take it day by day. And, uh, What's a regular day look like? Regular day, so before, before COVID, I was waking up 5.30. Now I'm getting up 7, 7.15, uh, give me, grab me some breakfast, uh, log on to school, and by the time I get out 106 or 240, uh, go to a workout, you know, mask up, everything, hand sanitizer, you know, and that's, that's usually a day-to-day -day basis, about five, six days out of the week. So it's kind of hard to maintain focus because you got to be a big brother. Right. You have to help them with their school right. at times exactly. during the day and yeah. after. Exactly. So for me, we have foster kids. So when when they're online, I'm trying to help and as, as well as I'm online. So trying to go back and forth and uh, asking questions for them, what they need help on. And uh, thank God they're old enough to where they can they can handle their own. But from time to time, it's, it's, it's hard trying to do mine theirs right, right. and you know manage that all at the same time so. so how do you 
how do you keep from getting complacent in that situation? Because that's, it's tough. I've, I've noticed in my own personal experience, some kids, they, they're literally on their own. Right. You know, some right. parents have to go to work right. Right. and right. have no mm -hmm. choice but to leave the kids at home with right. their computer, so they have to check in themselves, mm -hmm. to self-manage. I watched one kid doing school, and he was uh, having a conversation, and I said, hey, man, your computer's on, you yeah. should be in school. Right. And he said, I already answered my question, mm -hmm. meaning that he had to pay attention long enough mm -hmm. to answer That's one question, question, and he could actually check out yeah. mentally. So how do you... How do you handle that, man? How do you handle the, the structure of, of being at home um, in school? For me, it was, you know, I have to have be in a, a space where it's clean and quiet and, mm -hmm. you know, no, not too much noise. And so the big thing for me was, you know, just being focused, staying focused, uh, trying, to, trying to just adjust to everything that's going around, everything around me. And, uh, just, just trying my best at whatever I can possibly do as, as much as I can. And uh, when you say, when you say it's harder, uh, I, I would think so. It's harder because me, online, yeah, be in class. exactly. So, because me, I like to be interacting with the teacher, uh, asking questions, uh, helping other other classmates. And so, when it went on to virtual, sometimes you might have a connection problem or a, a, the computer isn't isn't working fully. So, trying to just adjust and and manage my my time and and schedule and uh, just just focusing uh, it, it, got, it got hard it got hard at times. You, have a, you still have a different instructor per yes, yes. so we're dealing with your different instructors there's been a lot with the teachers union they're right. kind of split half yes. of them want to go back to work uh -huh. half, half of them, them don't right. uh, there's a lot of reasons for that how has uh, the morale been amongst your teachers are they still as enthusiastic to um, step into the virtual classroom as you remember some uh, teachers more than others uh, in fact, I have some teachers teaching at school, all dressed up, tied, uh, everything wow, dressed right. up at school just to, because they're so used to it. You're, you're, doing, you're in class yeah, they're in classroom okay. and probably mm. just just to just to be in the same setting because they can't do it at home. Gotcha. And so when when the teachers at at home, they seem a little bit inter, unenergetic. You know, they're they're trying little different things just to get us going. As you know, some students they don't have that that push or that. Right that extra motive at home. Motivation. So so just trying to, the teachers trying to help as much as they can and parents stepping in and, and things like that, so, yeah. Right, well, you, you definitely sound like you're um, handling it well and, 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 and better than a lot of the kids that yeah. I've encountered and, and discussed this with, man. Let me ask you something. Uh, how do you uh, feel about hoop, man? Because I, what is the current status of basketball? I know how uh, badly I need the competitive yeah, edge. Yeah. Um, just playing with my son is one thing, but just being able to out, get out and get some exercise. Mm -hmm. But you competitively want a future in yeah. this game. There's scholarship opportunities available to you. You're waiting on letters, especially mm -hmm. in a year like yeah. this, right? So how has that affected you as far as basketball concerned? And what is the current state of uh, high school sports? Well, for me, it, it, it affected me. It touched my mental where, you know, it kind of took two steps back, like right. in the sense of, well, Wow, so ain't no school, ain't no basketball going on. I'ma I'm get to college or right. I'ma get to my next my next move. So I would just, you know, just try to stay ready. You know, doing things I used to do when I was younger, going outside, uh, getting free throws in, jump shots, jump roping, and getting getting back to me because the first month, I mean, I couldn't, I was stuck in the house, couldn't do nothing. I'm, I'ma do, I'ma right. do this, I'ma do that, and so, uh, it was just tough. Like was the scouts gonna see you. Exactly. That's season. how. Yeah. So. Do you got a season? No. Ah, uh, that's the hope we're yeah. hoping for. So that, 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 how does this guy? I know these guys are doing yeah. everything that they can to help you out. What does that look like? Act like as far as well, we, how you've been managing you know, these boys. Well, and honestly, honestly, this is my first time seeing him since March. We, we we lost March of last year in the second round of playoffs. Right. And that's where everything hit. And we haven't seen our boys since. And wow. see, being a public school, wow. we can't meet and greet. See, right. see, and then also too, we don't, we don't get together as a off-season AAU team. We tell our kids go, go play. We're gonna play now. Every now and then, we may have one tournament. We say, hey guys, this week we're gonna play as the running, the running rabbits, and we're gonna play out here at Orange Lutheran. But gotcha. so we don't, we don't see them. Man, and see what kind for me is like, you know, okay, like the county. They seem like you know. We're, uh, to, to yeah, the rules. Set of rules. Okay, so them schools, some of them public schools, they're practicing as a team, working out. And now we got calls to go to Arizona. Right. Oh, we'll pay for everything. Hold on. We're not going out there just because we got 
the best player in the state and we ain't practice. Oh, no, 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 no. Paul, don't get on like that. We're not going just for no right. side show. No. When, when, when it comes to, you know, and, it's, and see, for the young people too, I hope, I hope this is what you guys are doing, but even though this has been, in my opinion, a very, you know, negative time, there's been deaths, and this and the other, but if you're healthy, you know, it's rarely you get a chance, a pause button in life. Right. For all of us. Absolutely. You, now you gotta, like, okay, wait a minute. I was doing this, but I can't do that, but I can do this now. Oh, oh, wait a minute. But I can get my body and my mind right. Yeah. And then to pick back what you were talking about, yeah, there's no more ball, but check this out. Now, I know there's not a factor for you, but with no grades, ain't no ball, no way. You see what I'm saying? So it should be, you know, hold on, let me refocus on my academics. Right. So when the time, because see, some people are going to fall off. Right. And how the recruiting game goes, there's a priority list. Now, you may be number 19 on someone's list, but hey, they come knock on your door and say, young man, you took care of business. Here's your scholarship. Mm. And I'm like, huh, you? Hey, my grades was good. They saw me leadership. And then you got the, uh, you know, the school behind you with that name. You know what I'm saying? It's so great because I'm thinking about the, the, the full totality of this conversation. And three key words keep popping in my mind. Perseverance, uh, support, family, village, and don't get complacent. And this young man just sat in a chair and said those three things pretty much are what's sustaining him. Look, Darren, man, as soon as you sat down, I just hit you rapid fire, <laughs> yes, huh? sir, question yes, after question. <laughs> I know Jamari is sitting here waiting to get you cleaned up, man, but I, I do want to ask you one more thing, if you don't mind. Okay. How can we show up for you? How can the adults, this generation, show up for the youth? What do you guys need the most right now from us? Because um, I hear how you're showing up for yourself. Right. But in your conversations with your peers, knowing what everybody is going through, how can we show up for you? What do you, what do you guys need? Man, that's a good question, man. Yeah, so personally, I think we need communication, you know? Uh, getting out for the, the older generation, asking the kids, how y'all doing? Uh, where's your mental stability? And uh, asking how they've been, you know, just checking up on them, constantly checking up because us as youngers, younger, younger adults, we, uh, we tend to follow things, you know? We, uh, we follow the example, so. If you guys are leading by example and showing us the right way, I think, I think that will help us in a, in a huge way. Again, I'm Percy Daggs III. This city is near and dear to my heart, so it's been a true honor and pleasure to be a part of this Black and Well in Long Beach series. I hope that you gained something from it. I hope you had an opportunity to watch all three of our segments. If not, they are readily available at Elite Skills Development, at our YouTube channel, Facebook page, and Instagram. I look forward to when we can resume our regular schedules. Until then, please be diligent in staying safe, maintaining your health, and protecting those that you love and those in uh, the rest of the community. Continue to social distance, wear your mask, do your part. All Californians age 16 and over are eligible for the vaccine. I want to thank Elite Skills Development for giving me the opportunity to bring this important information to you. I hope that you've learned as much as I have. Peace.